Okay, let's pray and then we'll get started. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this, uh, Lord, um, for the purposes and plans you have in this day, Lord. And we thank you for your, Lord, the exhortation from your word, Father God, that, uh, Lord, uh, that thought that we need to be careful uh, about the deceitfulness of sin and uh, which results in hardness of heart and so god we we just pray that we'll continue to draw near to you and not distance ourselves from you lord no matter what god uh, whether it's a, a season of joy whether it's season of uh, oh god um, challenges lord i pray that we'll continue to draw near to you father god and uh, yes master we we just want to thank you that you're always there and you, you're always accessible to each one of us, God. You've made a way for us to come to the Holy of Holies, oh, Father God, to receive grace and mercy, Lord, to, for this day, God. We thank you. And I just pray for your grace and for your mercy to surround us this morning, to surround us today, God, um, for all the tasks that we need to do today, for all the uh, responsibilities that we have, oh God, that we need to accomplish, we need to fulfill. Father, we ask for your grace. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you that, as your word says, that um, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, we, we just want to um, uh, remind ourselves today that, uh, yes, greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And yes, truly, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your promises. And we thank you, Lord, you are Lord, journeying with us um, and taking us into fulfillment of those promises, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, over to Maggie, uh, who will present today's sermon. Over to you, Maggie. Thank you, sir. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I apologize again for the last time when I lost connection. And yeah, it's great to it's a great opportunity to present to you this morning. Um, the topic I, I chose was the topic of holiness of God, uh, because it's a topic that uh, has been on my mind for a couple of years. A friend of mine who is a who is a pastor at the church I used to be before gave me uh wrote on a piece of paper uh be holy and because I am holy and he told me to go and prepare a sermon on the topic and since twenty two thousand and eight till now I haven't been able to to prepare a sermon on it because it's a topic I don't I couldn't understand and I couldn't um come to conclusion of what does holiness mean. So uh, sharing today and preparing this during the, for the class actually helped me to, to research more in the topic. So without further ado, let's, let's start. Um, my title, the title of someone is Be Holy as I Am Holy. And the scripture of the sermon is uh, it's found in Leviticus 11, verse 45, which reads, For I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, so that I will be your God. Therefore, be holy, because I am holy. Um, this scripture God gave to Israelites when he brought them out of Egypt to to be his people. And in, in this scripture, as I drew four things, three things basically. For the fourth one is, is closing remark. Uh, one is the holiness of God, that's what I'll speak about. Second one is uh, a redeemed sinner, and the third one is the temple of God. So let's start with the holiness of God. Um when I was reading about researching about holiness of God, I just came to understand that the holiness of God just means the holy. Where the word holy means being set apart, being different from everyone or from everything else. And there's no much to it. There's no uh, other things we can add to it besides being said, okay, you are, you are set apart, you are different. You've been redeemed for 
a certain reason. So my understanding of this, when what the scripture says that we can only understand God to the extent of he, of that of which he has revealed himself to us. So the holiness of God we can understand is only how he has revealed himself to us. As we we know of, of the story of the 24 elders in heaven where they day and night they never see saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord. It's because every day, every day and every time they, there's a new revelation of God. There's a new anger of God they see. And then from that perspective, they worship him, they give him glory. So, uh, and another way we can know God is the, through his attributes. Through, and here are some of his attributes, his uniqueness, his eternal is, is infinite and omnipotent and many more and it helps to speak to Bible students because most of us understand and know and know this so through his attributes we can understand some of his how holy he is and how how far he is removed from us uh, and a god like that chose to a sinner uh like just a sinner like me and, and you. Uh, if we read in, uh, let's read John 3, 14 uh, to 19, it says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in, in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Uh, in this scripture, there are uh, four things we, we found that Everyone have uh, have sinned, and everyone have called uh, fallen the short of glory of God. Now I'm quoting from from Romans three twenty twenty three, which actually also takes speaks about the shortness of our our holiness, how far we are removed, how far we because of our sin we are removed from God, and. To satisfy the holiness of God, the God it, could on, it could only be done through the sacrifice of Christ. And through that, God sent his son to come and die for us so that we could get close to him again. And thirdly, is whosoever believe, and this is, is restored to, to him. So whosoever believe that in Jesus, whosoever believe in Jesus is restored to God. And then the last one is the promise, the promise of life. And it's not just a life that comes into 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 a believer's heart. It is the God Himself who come and live in him. So we come at temple. And this is the scripture read is John 14 23. And Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we will come to make him, well, we will come to him and make him our home. I think I, I just, I'm just paraphrasing. And one, one thing we see that a sinner who is unholy, God has re redeemed so that he can make a holy place where he can come, a God who is holy, who is higher than everything else, who is imaginable to come and make a human, just you and me, as his temple. Secondly, let me see if I'm still online. Okay, cool. I'm still on. Okay, cool. Secondly, uh, God wants communion. In fact, he wants us to be holy so that we can have communion with, with him, a God who is holy, who is 
the creator of all who sustain, sustains all, he wants a communion between men and him. And all he wants, all he asks is be holy. Be holy, set yourself apart so that I can come and be live in you. I can come make you my friend. I can come and be your savior. I can come and be your light to the world. And to those who who are unable to do that, he says in, in, in one Peter, say he God himself restores, confirm, strengthen, and establish so that there can be a relationship and a yeah, it can be a relationship and he can come and be your God. I don't know how much time I have left. So in conclusion, in closing, uh, I'll read Ephesians 4, uh, Ephesians 4, 24. Like Paul wrote, say, put off your old self, which belonged to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So brethren, let's put on our new self. Let's put off our old self. That's what the, our, our, that was our sinful nature so that God himself can, we can create an environment that is conducive for God to come and live. It can be a new temple that God desires. So let's be holy as he is holy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, first. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you so much. I think you have about two more minutes left in case you want to share something more also. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you. Right. So I think that was a, a very clear uh, invitation to holiness, We're talking about the nature of God, which is holy. And uh, also um, uh, that, that was nice talking about the new temple and also how the holiness is revealed through his, uh, through his nature, through his attributes um, and so on. Um, yeah. Um, and also, yeah, towards the end that you shared about uh, the, the, our responsibility as well, right? Um, in order to uh, respond to that invitation, our responsibility uh, in response uh, to that is to put off the old self and uh, and also put on uh, put on the new man, right? So that was uh, that was good. Thank you. Um, uh, just a couple of uh, uh, feedback. Uh, maybe I'll just share towards the end. But I just wanted to ask. Uh, of course, you shared how you went about preparing, and when uh, a pastor friend asked you to, um, you know, uh, study about the holiness of God and so on. So, um, so any thoughts on you know when you went about preparing, um, what happened, and um, yeah, etc. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I searched for first step. I took was searching for scripture that speaks about holiness, mm -hmm. and second, sec, second, supposed to watch sermons on 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 the holiness of God of people who have spoken about holiness, and the sermon that struck me most was by uh, uh, I think it's R. C. Sproul about holiness. So he say he. He spoke much on holiness, but he didn't speak about holiness. The only thing he spoke about holiness was self. Just God is uh, set apart, but we cannot fully understand him with our own mind. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's spoke much, much to me. That okay. Just, yeah, spoke much right. to me. Thank you. Right, right. Thank you. Um, yeah, anyone would like to share, you know, your comments, you can put it, I think you're already putting it on the chat. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Thank you, very, very clear in defining, uh, you know, uh, the holiness of God, the expectation of holiness from God. Um, uh, and in order, and also, you know, define holiness, which means being different. Um, and one of the things that uh, one can do, you know, to further 
enhance that is to uh, maybe you can go to the word you know the root word what is holiness when in leviticus 11 20 11 45 right um when uh, uh, god says be holy for i'm holy you can you can look at the you know hebrew probably and talk about um, you know what what is the meaning of that and uh, and therefore god expects this you know that we can do um it, it, to bring that out uh, with clarity another way to um you know, to bring out something that is, is to talk about what is not, you know, it's like a contrast, you know, so you can, you can talk about uh, what is not holiness, in order to bring about, uh, you know, what is holiness, so that would also help. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, just one other thing that I wanted to share was, um, yeah, so probably you can, uh, one of the things that you can talk is, you know, holiness of God is such a, um, you know, I know it's a, it's a, it's something, it's a mystery again, and uh, uh, mystery as in how, how, uh, and how we as finite beings can comprehend the, the awesome holiness of God, you know, that's, uh, it's going to take eternity to find out. Um, so uh, we know that that's, uh, that's the, you know, magnitude of that, uh, of that attribute of God, at the same time, you know, how can we uh, live practically? You know, um, so maybe a couple of uh, real life exa examples would have helped to, um, you know, when you invite. Uh, I think that's where you closed, right? The invitation was the call for holiness, the invitation for holiness for us to live. So, um, so when you were talking about. In that section, when you were talking about uh, the, the call for holiness, uh, you know, for us to respond, um, what would what could have you know uh, even added more clarity than what you already shared is uh, to talk about some real life examples. Okay, this is the, this is the challenge that we face, or this is the mindset that we have, uh, but you know, this is how we can live. Okay, so that was uh, one other thing that I felt could, um, you know, greatly enhance the application of it, the invitation of it as well. Um, and and the and the third one is uh, to talk about uh, because uh, we are um, already washed in the blood of Jesus and we are justified. Uh, to talk about the holiness that has been imparted to us, the righteousness that has been imparted to us uh, because of the blood of Jesus. That uh, you know, uh, as, even as you invite everyone to live holy, uh, um, and that invitation is to live holy because God has commanded. So, um, and it, rightly, you know, you quoted from Ephesians four to talk about how we need to put off and put on. Um, but what will really give us that strength uh, to put off the things of the flesh is the fact that we are already, you know, made the righteousness of God in Christ. Because we've studied that in the in Christ uh, course, uh, and we looked at several scripture that how we are, you know, made the righteousness of God in Christ. In Him, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So, um, so that's uh, that's an awesome, uh, you know, a wonderful thing that has happened to us as believers. He's washed us, He has um, with His precious blood, and He's covered us with His righteousness. So, uh, from so from that, um, you know, from that advantageous point or from that position we live out a life of holiness so that's the uh, that's the amazing privilege and the wonderful uh, you know the empowerment that we have right? because what happens is when we talk about the holiness of god generally speaking we see like oh god is amazingly holy and i am amazingly not holy <laughs> you know we see, see the contrast you know like as i said woe is me for i am a man of unclean lips you know, he he had this encounter with God, the glory of God, and his response was this: you know, I just realized my unworthiness. Okay, so that happens whenever we see. But the fact is, we also see what God has done for us in Christ. We see that we are clothed with His righteousness through the blood of Jesus. So every time he looks at us, he looks at us that way. So um, that would be very empowering again. So I just thought I should mention these three things, right? Okay. Thank uh, you so much, sir. sir. Right. Tom, sir. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Um, and yeah, you. Uh, I think you did it in a good time. You paced yourself well. You had, in fact, two more minutes left. So that was good. Okay. So uh, next we have Beth. Beth Devraj to uh, share a um, sermon. Go ahead, Beth. Okay. Uh, Beth, I think you're muted, so 
Okay, there we go. Um, good morning, everyone. This morning, I would like to just share with you something that God has been speaking to me about in the last um, weeks and months, and that is the secret held by faith and peace. Um, I'll say that the secret that is held by faith and peace. And I just like to start by reading a little poem by Helen Steiner Rice. Um, it goes like this. God, teach me to be patient. Teach me to go slow. Teach me how to wait on you when my way I do not know. Teach me sweet forbearance when things do not go right. So I remain unruffled when others grow uptight. <clears throat> Teach me to be quiet, my racing, rising heart, so I may hear the answer you are trying to impart. Teach me to let go, dear God, and pray undisturbed until <clears throat> excuse me, my heart is filled with inner peace and I learn to do your will. I just want to repeat that last verse. It says, teach me to let go, dear God, and pray undisturbed until my heart is filled with inner peace and I learn to do your will. This morning, I'd just like to go through um, three Bible stories, incidents, and draw out an application for us on the connect between faith, peace, and its result. So the first story I'd like to look at is in Luke 8, 22 to 25. So I'll put that in the chat. Um, sorry, just hold on a minute. There we go, if you'd like to turn to that. Um, this is the story of um, the disciples in the boat with Jesus, a very famous story that a lot of us would have heard as children in Sunday school. Um, and uh, it says, as they sailed, he, that is Jesus, fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. Um, we see the disciples are full of fear as they are out of control in a boat in a storm. Fear cripples them. They see Jesus and not so much from faith, but really surprised that Jesus is calmly asleep while there's this storm raging, while their lives are in danger. And they wake Jesus and they say, Jesus, only you can save us. Actually, no, that's not what they say. They say, Master, don't you care? We are going to drown. Jesus wakes up and fixes the storm. He calms the storm. And then he says, where is your faith? Often when life is out of control, we lack faith in God's word. We lack faith in the person of Jesus, just like the disciples. They were with him. It's not like Jesus was far away, but they didn't have faith in him. And when this happens, we become helpless. We panic. We get angry with God. We say, God, how could you? God, why aren't you doing anything? God, do this. We completely lack peace. So this is my first point, that when we look only at the situation, when we look at our surroundings, when we look at a situation, it leads to fear. But even in this story, when they went to Jesus, out of fear, in his grace, Jesus was there. Jesus rescued them and drew them to faith in him. As we see um, in the verses, they say, who is this man? And they worshipped him. So that's my first point. When we look at the situation, it leads us to fear. My next story that I would like to talk about is in Acts 16. I'll put that in the chat again. Acts 16, verses 22 onwards. And this um, story 
is about Paul and Silas in the prison. And um, let's just read the first few verses as it goes. Um, from 23, no, 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and jailer and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Here in the story, we find Paul and Silas singing in a prison. They had been flogged. Okay, if you're flogged, you're in pain. They were in a terrifying place. They were in the inner cell, which is probably the darkest, dampest, smelliest part of the prison. And they were facing a very real possibility of death. And when I read the story, I kind of picture in my mind that um, perhaps Paul just started singing really softly, you know, very to himself a song of praise to God, and then maybe Silas joined in, and as they sang together, they fixed their eyes on Jesus, and the song would have grown louder and louder, and they would have been emboldened, and they would have probably even forgotten where they were. We see so clearly that their eyes were fixed on Jesus, only because they had faith in Jesus. Faith was so strong, their peace followed. Peace was overwhelming, and that's why they began to sing praise. My second point that I would like to bring out is that looking through the eyes of faith brings peace. Looking through the eyes of faith at Jesus brings peace. But as we read in the story, they were singing, and a violent earthquake opened the prison doors. So not only does faith bring peace, but as we act in that peace, God's impossible comes to life. And this is the secret, brothers and sisters, that when we have faith, God brings peace into our lives and his impossible, or our impossible becomes possible in God. When we sing from a heart of peace in the midst of troubles, great things can happen, not just for us, but even for those around us, the jailer, those holding us in prison, God's possible comes into their lives and God is glorified. So we've seen two kind of opposite stories, one where they were looking at the situation and panicking. And now we've seen a story where um, Paul and Silas had their eyes fixed on Jesus. But I tend to identify with the character of the next story which we can find in Matthew 22. Um, here, Peter is cruising along in his boat and life is good. He's just been part of the amazing feeding of the 5,000. His faith level is high. He is glorying in the person of Jesus. So that when he sees Jesus walking on water with his eyes of faith fixed on Jesus, with peace in his heart, he steps out of the boat and walks on water. So I forgot to um, put the reference in. So that's Matthew 14, 22, for those who would like to look at it. Um, so Peter, he's full of faith. His faith tank is full and he steps out. But then what happens? We know the story. He looks at the wind. He looks at the waves getting bigger and begins to drown. His faith and peace led him to step out. And it's all great. But then he starts to drown. This is a very real struggle we as humans experience. I experience the battle of looking at Jesus and looking at our situations. The beauty of this story is what Jesus does in verse 31. So if we could just turn, turn to verse 31, I just love that verse. It says, immediately in Matthew 14, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. So even as he was beginning to lose faith, Jesus reached his hand out and caught um, Peter. 
and the disciples worshipped Jesus. Even in his struggle, the grace of God was greater than um, Peter's failure. So what I would like to encourage us as believers is that we fix our faith in the word that is Jesus. His peace will then live in us. As we are promised in Isaiah 26, 3, which says, you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, not on the situation, because he trusts in you. With this peace, we can begin to sing praise in our dark places, like Paul and Silas. When we see no way out, our faith is in God, peace falls, and the impossible becomes possible. With this peace, we can step out of our safe places. Peter was in a safe place on the boat. But with his eyes fixed on Jesus and the peace that followed, he was able to step out of the boat, step into the unknown. Sometimes God leads us in places we don't know. And with this, possible things happen that were impossible before. And through it all, the glory goes to God. So what is the secret then of faith and peace? The secret is that faith leads to peace and together it leads to making the impossible possible and the glory of God is shown on the earth. And for me, it's just a win-win situation. It's a win for us, it's a win for God. And I would just like to encourage you, when, when you don't see the way, when things are dark, um, when you feel like God's leading you somewhere and you don't really know where he's going, Fix your eyes on him. Let faith be on him. Let peace dwell in your heart. And then you will see the impossible becoming possible and glory going to God. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Beth. I think that was that was good. And uh, um, just one second. Um, okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was good. Um, very very uh, clear and simple. Um, do you um, do you teach children by any chance, um, Beth? Yes, I do. You do. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think that was very clear the way you um, brought out the stories and um, and the kind of the details in each of these stories. Um, we could, you know, uh, I could visualize it. I, I don't know if the others felt the same way. Um, uh, you know, we could uh, uh, we could you know, almost see the we were there. You know, in each of the stories that you, I mean, each of these instances that you describe. Uh, we couldn't help but be there um, participating in that. I think that was very good, the way you uh, brought it home. Uh, that was nice. And the, and the poem also it was a good intro. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, in each of these points, the, the, the lessons in each of these stories, uh, I think uh, many, many takeaways. Um, so that, that was uh, clear as well. And, uh, yeah, I think Rose is, yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Okay, any questions here? No. Okay, reminds. Uh, okay, so which it says reminds Sunday school teachings. I think that's. Uh, so how, how often do you teach, uh, uh, Beth? Do you uh, what do you do? Do you do you uh, do you have do you minister to children? Uh, you. I teach English in the local school, but I've done a lot of different things as well. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And you you said you were in Anantapur, is it or? Uh, uh, near Salem, outside of Salem. It's quite a rural school. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so so that was good. That was good. So the connection between faith and peace drawing us to uh, peace. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have anything more to add to it. Um, you know, I think it was, it was very clear, very nice. Um, and thank you for reminding us to fix our eyes on, on Jesus, you know, through the storm and in the prison and in those uh, you know moments of uh, um, where the wind and the waves try to intimidate us to 
I think to fix our eyes on that. Yeah, I think for me, the one takeaway was um, Paul and Silas in the prison. You know, the way he described, probably uh, Paul was just started by singing, humming to himself. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, I you know, that was so, so true. You know, probably that's how the song started. It wouldn't have started with, okay, one, two, three, let's all sing. You know, it, it wouldn't have started that way. You would have probably, you know, the way you described it, maybe hum a very familiar tune which they always used to sing when they got together to worship. And maybe, yeah, like you said, Silas joined in and then, you know, everybody. And then it was a crescendo when it, you know, when it was just declaring the praise of God, declaring, uh, you know, the worship of in between those lines, you know, saying, God, you are good. And then, you know, I could just almost imagine, you know, picture, uh, pictureize that and the whole atmosphere changing, the environment changing. And, there comes the breakthrough, right? And and at the end of it, the jailer saying, you know, what what must I do? What should I do to be saved? So, yeah. So that was a that was a takeaway for me, right? Okay. Um, so we uh, we have uh, what is that, uh, Beth? Um, oh, okay, your uh, message notes is it? The link that you sent. Let me just. Okay, the poem. Okay, nice. Okay, right. So we have, uh, uh, I think we have about ten more minutes. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll have uh, Felix present, but we we'll, if you can go for two more minutes after that. So Felix, you can present the sermon, um, and then probably I'll share the feedback. Uh, we we can all share the feedback in the next class, right? Go ahead, Felix. I'm trying to present. Um, let me just see. It's not coming. Hello there. Hi. Pastor, you're can you see my Yeah, I can. Um, we can see it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm I'm talking on the dew of heaven. Um, um, if you do a shift F five, it'll uh, uh, it'll go into full screen. So, uh, but if you want to do it this way, that's also fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me let me let me change screen. Okay. Is it better? Yeah. Now we can. Okay. Okay. I'm talking on the dew of heaven. So these are the things I'll talk about. I'll talk about what dew is how is form the importance and then characteristics so basically dew is water in the form of droplets that appear on thin exposed objects in the morning or evening due to condensation so in the morning evaporation water evaporated when there is humidity now any cold surface becomes a surface for cooling so when the water cools or condenses then dew is formed or collected on the surface now, my main text is in Genesis chapter 27, verse 27 to 28. So, um, it's that as he came, basically Isaac was blessing um, um, Jacob. And then, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, part, the key passage of the blessing I want to talk about. So, as he came up to kiss him, Isaac smelled his clothes. So, he gave him his blessing. He said, the pleasant smell of my son is like the field, and, and like, like a smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. May God give you dew from heaven and make your fields fatal. May he give you plenty of corn and wine. So that's where the, the term, the dew of heaven comes from that I'm going to talk about. Now dew is especially important for greenery on Mount Hermon. It's kept the mountain green and um, the grass green all year round and the dew um, from the mountain dripped into um, the Jordan River. So on those mountainous area, in, specifically on Mount Hermon, now, the dew collected so much that sometimes it becomes like frost. So, and that's a lot of water because it cools. And then um, the water in the morning, when it, um, it dries up or it melts up, it drips down and then goes into the river. So it was a lot of water collecting at that point. Now, and it makes the, um, the leaves or the plants on the mountain very green. So that's, that's, that's one significant thing. Now, formation of dew and water, and I just want to compare dew and water here, or rain. 
Okay. Now, it gives forms from water vapor that condenses on cold surfaces on the ground, whilst rain forms from water vapor condensing the sky as the clouds. If water molecules gather together, it will get too heavy and it stays in the clouds and falls down. Now, basically, rain is a bit different. Rain is considered the purest form of water, but um, rain can be contaminated, but dew can never be contaminated. For example, rain can be seeded, okay, in the um, Emirates, where the desert is, um, they can fly drones above the sky and then spray um, sodium iodide. Uh, um, the uh, small particles of sodium iodide, they form nucleuses on which water or rainwater can grow. So when it's heavy, then it falls down, okay? When on the, and sometimes they can get a drone up there and it will shoot laser into the clouds and then make the water molecules gather together and then form. Now, in the first case, when the chemical is used, the water can be contaminated. So rainwater can be contaminated, even though it's considered the purest form of water. You can never be contaminated, except that the surface on which it's formed is contaminated, but the dew itself can never be contaminated. Okay. And then, uh, um, so dew and rain, so rain comes seasonally and comes a lot. Dew doesn't come um, or doesn't fall that much, so not so much of it comes at a time. It comes, um, so as, as the, if the humidity is high, as the water collects and it drips, then more water collects and it drips, more water collects. But rain comes and comes in a large quantity at a time. Now, one important thing about the dew is that um, it provides sustenance to plant in the right amount, okay? The right amount of sustenance, sustenance that the plant needs. So for a believer, now when um, um, Isaac was talking about the dew, so he was saying that the sun will be sustained with whatever he needs at the right amount over the course of his life. Now, the view also helps the plant to grow deeper towards large supply of water, as just as a guide for deeper roots. For example, it doesn't give so much water, so the water is not in abundance. So the plant, if it needs extra water, it needs to dig down the roots, okay? So it trains the plant in digging down, digging, digging down, and making its roots stronger. So it goes deep, for example, if, um, there's water in a place underneath, the plant can now access it, okay? Because the, the roots are going down. Okay, water deposited on leaves and uh, grass reduce transpiration, water loss, it reduces water loss. And then um, it forms a protective barrier on the leaves because of, of reduced water loss. And then it reduces heat stress through transpiration. So these are technical stuff. Now, but most importantly, dew helps in making plants acquire deeper roots. So for a believer, now, access to dew allows you, so the, uh, the word of God is considered water, we'll talk about that later, water, so it allows you to dig deeper into God, to go deeper into God, because you have access, you have just the right amount, now it creates the test for water, it creates the test for more, so you're able to dig deeper into him. So characteristics of dew, it preserves, so when, when God brought manna, to the camp of the people, it came with dew. So we can look at Numbers chapter nine. I'm not sure if I have too much time. So Numbers chapter nine, verse 11. Can uh, someone read that? You can go on till about uh, 9.52, another five more minutes. Um, yeah. Okay, so can someone read that for us? Um, Numbers chapter nine, verse, like chapter 11, verse nine, sorry. Uh, no one is there, I can go on. Can I get someone to read for us? Oh, okay. Um, eleven twenty nine. Eleven nine. Okay. Yes. Number please. eleven. Eleven nine. Verse, okay. Yeah. Verse nine. When the and and when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the the manna fell on it. Yeah. Okay. So the dew helped preserve the manna. Okay. That, that's important. Now, when pro God provided quills, they also came with dew. Now, when the quills came in the night, the morning, the dew covered the land because it was a desert. Most of this, the, there was the, the sun there. Now, if the heat of the morning, were, the quills were exposed to the heat of the morning, some of them could have died. So the dew um, was like an interplay between this, them and the, it gave, it, cool, uh, it cooled the land so that the heat didn't have the direct impact on the animals. So, okay. 
Now, God's word and doctrine descends like the dew and showers. I'll need someone to read this. And then yeah, I'll read the ones that are Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. Can someone read that too? I can read it. My teaching okay. drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. Amen. So um, as I was saying, now when the word of God comes like dew or the rain, now in the case of dew, because it's just in the right amount, it allows the receiving plants to dig deeper roots, go deeper, because it might it creates the test for more. The word of God creates the test in people for more. Therefore, they can go deeper and deeper and set for more water. That, and by so doing, they get deeper roots and then and be able to withstand the storm and then uh, yeah other such um, hazards. Do you connote um, continuous safety and sustenance? I uh, will not read that. Go on. So do you can be supplied throughout the night. Now this is uh, okay. Someone can read Job chapter twenty nine verse nineteen. Now it's yeah you can read that and I will just to talk about it briefly. Job chapter twenty nine verse nineteen. My root is spread out to the waters, and the dew lies all night on my branch. Hallelujah. So um, um, the dew can be supplied all night. Now, that's important because um, it's like continual amount of water. As I said, when the, when the humidity is good, they, it collects and then it drips down. It collects and it drips down. It's like little drops of water at a time, but it's accumulated and then it provides some amount of water. So. And it, on Mount Hermon, for example, it's kept the, um, the leaves on the plants on the mountain green. And that was very good. So it, uh, it, it was a reference point to prosperity for the people. Now, this is a symbol of youth. Um, young men, your young men are to you as they do. So I'll, I'll not read that. Okay. Now, D was responsible for the greenery on Mount Hermon. Now, some, okay, we can read the Psalm 131, verse 3. Now, as they do of Hermon, Someone can read. Someone can read, please. Psalm 133, maybe, yeah, from 1 to 3, I think. Psalms 133, 1 to 3 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell toward together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. Amen. So this was a symbol of blessing. The dew collected on the mount. Sometimes it came as frost. There was a lot of it. Now when the, uh, the sun came up, it dried up. So it melted, and then it tripped down the mountain. And it kept the mountain green. The, the, the greenery of the mountain was maintained because of the dew. Now, so a child of God, as we stick, we stay in the house of God, as we stick with the word of God, now our lives tend to flourish, not just because of material things, but because of the depth we have in God's word. Now, that keeps us in the greenery all the time. So the king's favor is like dew on the grass, and it's refreshing. I will not read that. And then our dew is a dew of the morning. So Isaiah chapter, um, yeah, I will not read that as well. Now, God is like you. Um, yeah, Felix, I think the time is up, 9.52, but you can take one more minute to wind okay. up, please. Yeah. Okay, God is like you to his people, and God sustains, um, dew sustains prosperity, and then water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. For the New Testament believer, that dew that is um, in the form of water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit that refreshes us all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Felix. That was very, very interesting. And uh, uh, I've never heard uh, something about the dew. Uh, and so, um, uh, and all the scientific facts, you know, presented this way is very nice. Yeah. Uh, just one request, um, uh, you know, uh, for everyone who, if you have the PowerPoint, the whatever PowerPoint you have presented, you can put it on the stream for us to, um, you can upload it uh, on the stream. So we can also take a look at it, right? Um, Okay, so yeah, it was just like dew refreshing. Yes, very nice. Thank you. So we uh, we'll uh, I'll I'll share my feedback uh, in the next class. Okay, when we meet on Friday. Okay, thank you so much.
really enjoying these messages really blessed thank you god bless bye bye thank you pastor